Oh, Yehuda, I like summer vacation a lot. No tests, no homework. But to tell you the truth, after a week or two of being home, I start getting bored. Especially on a day like today, when it's raining outside and we can't go to the park. I know what you mean, Akiva. All those guys from our class who went to overnight camp are so lucky. But my parents just couldn't afford to send me this year. Yeah, I know, Yehuda. I couldn't go because of my allergies. The country really makes me sick. Well, I don't want to sit here whole day and mope about it. Let's think of something to do. Okay, why don't we... Uh, no, that's not a good idea. What do you want to do, Yehuda? Well, we can always... Uh, that's not good either. We did that yesterday. I don't know. What do you want to do? Wait a minute. I just thought of a great idea. What is it? What is it? Let's go to my Zadie's house. I know he's home today. Oh, come on, Akiva. What kind of games could he play at his house? Not to play games, Yehuda. To hear a story. My Zadie's the best storyteller in the whole world. I don't want to hear a story, Akiva. I want to do something exciting. His stories are exciting. He has his big, gigantic storybook that's very, very old, filled with the most wonderful stories. And besides, Yehuda, he'll probably give us milk and a whole plate of my booby's delicious cookies. Milk and cookies? Oh, boy. Well, it can't be worse than sitting here doing nothing. Let's go. Fly without wings through the air Can you leap into space And land on a star And feel just as if you were there Can you travel in time To an age from the past Or climb up a mountain so high Can you dream in your mind Or imagine so fast Without even closing your eyes all you need is a story, a wonderful story There's so many kinds you can choose With princes and kings and mysterious things Whatever it is you can lose All you need is a story, a wonderful story Exciting suspense through and through With action and thrills, lots of tension and chills What's in store is a story for you I know what it takes to soar through the sky Adventure awaits you, my friend With a story so real that you'll laugh and you'll cry And wish that it never will end So gather round children And hold your seats tight As we move through time and through space With a tale of enchantment, suspense and delight We're off to a far away There's so many kinds you can choose With dangers and fright, darkness and light Whatever it is you can lose All you need is a story, a wonderful story Exciting suspense through and through With twists and with turns and a lesson to learn What's in store is a story for you
is it? It's me, Zadie, Akiva. I'm here with my friend Yehuda. Come in, come in. Oi, such terrible weather today. You must be soaking wet. Come in, you'll get nice and dry. That's better. Now, take your shoes off and go sit down in the living room. I'm going to get you some milk and cookies. See? I told you he would give us milk and cookies. You should have told me about your Zadie two weeks ago. I just love milk and cookies. Shh, your Zadie's coming. Here you are, boys. Fresh cookies baked by Booby just this morning. Go ahead and take. But don't forget to say your brochis. Don't worry, Zadie. We won't. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. So, uh, what brings you here today, Akiva? I hardly ever get to see you in the summertime. You're always too busy to come and visit your Zadie. Zadie, could you tell us a story? I told you, Huda, what a great storyteller you are. Please. Of course, Akiva. I'll get my storybook down from this shelf. But which story do you want to hear? It's a little magician? Or, uh, the secret cave of Yerushalayim? Or maybe your favorite, the... No, no, Zadie. I want to hear something you've never told me before. I want to hear a new story. Hmm. You want to hear a new story? Yes, I have a new story for you. But it's really an old story. A very old story. More than 300 years old. Would you like to hear it? Yes, yes, please! Okay, boys. Come a little closer and I'll tell you the incredible story of the Golden Crown. The Golden Crown? Yes, the amazing story of the Golden Crown, which begins on a cold, dark night in the little village of Kerevan, in the great kingdom of Voldania. For we find the great Tzadik and Talmud Chochem, Rebarele Kalisher, bending over his Gemore, learning by the light of a small flickering candle. When all of a sudden, there's an urgent knock on his door. Rebbe, Rebbe, please, open the door. It's urgent. Rebbe, please, open the door. Rebbe Yitzchok, my dear Shamis. What brings you here so late at night? Come in from the cold. I'll get you a warm glass of tea. Rebbe, there's no time. I must tell you. Yitzchok, I insist that you come in first. You're shivering and your face is blue. If you don't come in right away, you'll get frostbite. Chas v'sholoim. All right, Rebbe. It's so cold and windy outside tonight. But just for a minute. We must hurry. Yes, yes, Rebbe Yitzchok. But only after you sit here by the fire and warm your frozen bones. That's better. Now you can tell me what the emergency is. But start from the beginning and don't leave anything out. Of course, Rebbe. I'll tell you everything from the beginning. For some reason, I couldn't fall asleep tonight. So I decided to go to shul to say something to heal him. Then I noticed the door to the shul was wide open. Someone broke into the shul? Yes, Rebbe. But how could that be? Duke Alexander, who owns this village and all the surrounding lands, has always been kind to the Jews. And he has been paying one of his soldiers to guard the shul every night, ever since that break-in last year. The first thing I did, Rebbe, was to go to the soldier's house. He told me he was ordered not to stand guard tonight. The Duke ordered him to stay home? How could he? No, Rebbe. The soldier told me the Duke has gone on a hunting expedition, and he left his brother, Count Nicholas, in charge. Nicholas? That Russia? The soldier told me it was Nicholas who ordered him not to stand down tonight. Rachmano, Litzlan! What damage was done, Yitzchok? Did those vandals smear paint all over the shul like last time? No, Rebbe. Nothing at all was damaged. I don't understand, Yitzchok. Baruch Hashem, we've been spared. Why did you have to come all the way out here on such a cold and windy night? Rebbe, at first I didn't realize myself what happened. But then I noticed the door to the Unkaidish was slightly open. Rebbe, as if we have been stolen. This scroll of parchment clean 
and white With letters black as coal For centuries has bound us tight United as one soul With words that dance before Hashem And leap up from the page By the voices of our people From this and every age The troubled years, they come and go No end is yet in sight With bitter tears we ask Hashem To save us from the night But though the goddess does remain We know we can endure With Taira to sustain us So precious and so Freeman, what happens? And what about the golden crown? When does that come in? Patience, boys, patience. I promise you I'll tell you the whole story. That is, unless you're in a big rush to go somewhere else today. No, no, we're not going anywhere. We want to hear the rest. We'll be patient, Zadie. We promise. Okay. Now, before I tell you what Rabarla did, Let's find out what happened to the Sifri Torah. You see, Count Nicholas, the Duke's evil brother, had hired a band of thieves to steal the Sifri Torah. These thieves were led by a giant of a man, the ruthless and powerful Borozov. He was almost seven feet tall, strong as half a dozen horses, and known throughout the country as the most dangerous man alive. Borozov and his band of thieves went straight from the shul with the Sifre Torah 
to secretly meet Nicholas outside the castle vaults. Stop here, men, and remain a safe distance from the castle. We don't want any of the Duke's soldiers aware of our presence. I must now go on alone to meet Count Nicholas by that large rock near the castle walls. Igor, give me the sack filled with those worthless Jewish scrolls. When I return, this sack will be filled with gold. We'll celebrate later at our forest hideout. <laughs> Where is that scoundrel Borisov? He should have been here long ago with those scrolls. Ah, I hear footsteps. That must be him now. Borisov, you're late. I am not at all accustomed to being kept waiting. Do you have the scrolls? What an impatient man you are, my dear Count. Of course I have them. It was like taking sweets from a child. But more important, do you have the gold you promised me? Well, not exactly. Why, you miserable, despicable excuse for a count. I'll break every bone. Wait, wait, put me down, you beast. Let me explain. This had better be good, Nicholas, or you can start saying your prayers. What I have for you, Barazov, is made of gold. It is far more precious than gold. Speak not in riddles, Nicholas. I am growing impatient. What would you say if I offered you in exchange for the scrolls? This! Hmm? It's the golden crown. The famous golden crown of our Duke Alexander. But how do you come to possess it? Everyone knows that he never removes the crown from his head. That is not your concern, Barazov. I have the crown. And I'm willing to give it to you in exchange for the scrolls. Do you want it or not? <laughs> of course I want it! The golden crown is priceless! I'll be rich for the rest of my life! <laughs> You're a fool for giving it to me, Nicholas! But I'll take it! <laughs> Why did the Count give away the golden crown, Zadie? He could have just given Borisov some pieces of gold in exchange for the Sifrei Tyra. And why did Nicholas want the Sifre Torah in the first place, Mr. Friedman? Those are very good questions, Kinderlich. I think I'll answer uh, Yehuda's question now, and I'll let the story answer your question, Akivale. Now, do you boys know what a ransom is? Oh, I know, Mr. Friedman. It's when you steal something and don't give it back until you're paid a lot of money for it. That's right, Yehuda. That's why the evil Nicholas stole the Sifri Torah in the first place. In fact, right after Borozov left the palace, the Count sent a messenger with a ransom note to the home of Rabarov Kalisher, where the leaders of the shtetl were meeting to discuss the emergency. Please, please, Rabo Shai, let us not panic! Everyone shall be heard and turned! Now, Mayor, what is it you wanted to say? In the name of the Count, open up. I carry a message for the Rabbi of the Jews. Which one of you is he? It is I. Take this letter. It is for you. A message from the Count. Read it. What does it say? Read it. Read it, please. Read it. Please. Yes, yes. Let me open it. It says, Jews of Caravan. Your beloved scrolls are safe and in my hands. Wait, 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 there's more. If you wish to get them back, a payment of 10,000 guldens must be made to my royal treasury within three days. If not, the scrolls will be burned. 10,000 guldens? How can we collect that much? In only three days! Nicholas the Russia Is so heartless and so cold He only thinks of money 
coins of silver and of gold With treachery and evil This man only has one wish To be the greatest king of all The richest of the rich I'm an honest, simple tailor Who works hard to earn his bread Do I forfeit my last penny? Let him tax me till I'm dead And I am but a poor farmer With a plow I toil all day The little that I have Do I throw it all away? The Russia has but one thing on his mind Rubies, sapphires, diamonds Any jewel that glows and shines He already is a wealthy man What does he need it for? But no, he's still not happy He wants more and more and more I am but the town smilomid With eight little mouths to feed Must I put myself in misery To satisfy his greed? And I, the village blacksmith Who works harder than a slave How can I pay this ransom? It would drive me to my grave we all are poor, hard-working people Yet together we all choose To give up all our money We are proud that we are Jews Let him have our silver Let him even have our gold But not our Sifrit Ira Our Neshama, our soul but not our Sifre Taira, our Nishama, our soul. But not our Sifre Taira, our Nishama, our soul. How precious are your children, B'nai Yisroel, who would give away their last possessions for the sake of your Taira. Please answer our prayers and deliver us from this evil man. Rabbi. We must hurry and begin an emergency collection from everyone in this shtetl. And we must appeal to our fellow Jews in all the nearby cities and towns for help. We have no other choice. Rebbe, I'm not so sure would be wise to pay this ransom like Mayor suggests. What is he what? talking about? What? 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 Please, what everyone, let him finish. Rebbe, if we do pay the money to the Count, what will stop him or anyone else? from stealing our Sifri Torah again, or maybe doing something even worse, just in order to force us into paying a large ransom. Yitzchok is right. Don't you remember the story of Rav Meir Mirutenberg, the Maram who was kidnapped for ransom? Just like our Sifri Torah. And he would not allow the Jews of his city to pay for his freedom. He remained a prisoner for the rest of his life. Only because he did not want the Rishoyim to think they could get ransom whenever they wanted to. But there must be something else that we could do. Rebbe, I have an idea. Perhaps I and some of the younger men from our town could make our way secretly into the castle and take the Sifri turret by force. Absolutely not, Yochanan. The Count is a dangerous man. And he is well protected by soldiers. It would be a great sakono to try to use force. I will not allow it. Rabbi Sai, it appears that we have no other choice but to appeal to our dear friend, the Duke. But, Mayor, do you forget that the Count is the brother of the Duke? Surely the Duke would not help. No, Yitzchok. I believe that Mayor is right. The Duke has always been a true friend of the Jews. And I believe he will help us in any way he can. Let us find out where he has gone so that we can send him a message informing him of his brother's treachery. 
Yitzchok, take a quill and write as I speak. Wait, who could that be? Shimon, my son. I'm afraid it will have to wait till later. We are in the midst of an important meeting. But father, we've just received terrible, terrible news. Duke Alexander is dead. The Duke is dead, Zayn? But Mr. Friedman, you said the Duke had gone on a hunting expedition. I only said he... But Zadie, if the Duke is dead, who will help the Jews? Now, Kindle, remember you promised you'd be patient. Let me continue with the story and everything will be explained. Now, just a few hours after Borzov left the castle, with the crown carefully hidden in his sack, Count Nicholas ordered his royal guard to gather in full armor in the courtyard of the castle. Soldiers of the loyal guard, you must go this hour on a vital mission to avenge the innocent blood of my dear brother, our master. The Duke of Oldania, who has been brutally murdered in cold blood. The Duke is dead. Yes, he has been killed by Borisov and his gang of thieves. And the golden crown was taken from his head. Count Nicholas, just tell us where we may find this evil Borisov, and we shall ride immediately. You will find Borisov and his men in the forest of Petrovsk. But remember this, kill Borisov and his men on sight. He is a powerful man, and you'll never be able to take him prisoner. And one more thing, be absolutely sure that you bring me back the golden crown. Now be off! I return to my chambers to mourn the untimely loss of my beloved brother. We vow to bring the cruel murderer to justice this day. Men? Forward to the forest of Petrovsk. My plan is working out to perfection. That fool Borisov will soon be dead. The golden crown will be mine. The Jews will pay me a fortune and ransom for their scrolls. And I shall finally be Duke. But now, I must pay someone a visit down in the secret dungeon cell that is beneath this room. To share with him the great news of my glorious victory. Who goes there? So, my prisoner, how does it feel to go for two days with no food or drink? You will pay for this treachery, Nicholas. I will have my revenge one day. Never! My plan is working to perfection. The whole country is now mourning the death of their beloved Duke, murdered by that scoundrel Borisov and his band of thieves. And in but a few days' time, the kingdom of Oldania will be mine! Why, you told them that Borisov murdered... Yes, yes, Alexander, my dear brother. The people believe you to be dead, as you soon will be. <laughs> the Duke wasn't really killed, Mr. Friedman? That's right, Yehuda. Kidnapped and imprisoned, but still very much alive. I don't understand, Zadie. Why is he letting the Duke live? Because he doesn't know yet the secret location of the Duke's treasures, where he hides his chests of gold and silver. Alexander refuses to tell him. So that's why Nicholas won't feed him. He's starving him to death, to torture him into telling where his money is. You're absolutely right, Yehuda. But now let's find out what's happening with the Jews of Caravan. You see, it's already Friday morning, and everyone in the shtetl is getting ready for the holy day of Shabbos. Set the tish, it's Shabbos soon. Shabbos, Kodesh, and Chalasai. Close the 
the shutters of the shops, it's Shabbos soon. Bathe your children, wash the floor, it's Shabbos soon. Feed the horses, clean the sheds, it's Shabbos soon. Change your clothes, it's Shabbos soon. Light the candles, don't delay, it's Shabbos soon. Take your sons and go to shul, it's Shabbos soon. Hashem. Just look at them busy preparing for Shabbos, as if nothing was wrong, even though their lives have been turned upside down by the death of the good duke and his evil brother's rise to power. I know, Rabbi, the fate of our people is very strong. But what are we going to do? We cannot sit by quietly while that Russia ruins our lives. But we will do something, Yitzchok. I would like you to tell all the people of our village to gather in the shul at noon for a special gathering lit shuvo vilit filo. We will say tehillim together and beg Hashem to hear our prayers. Of course, Rebbe. I'll start telling them right now. What a loyal shamist that Yitzchok is. We are so fortunate. What is that I hear? Someone's knocking on the back door. Uh, help me. You must help me. Shimon, Shimon, come here, quick. What is it, father? <gasps> Who is that man? What is he doing on the floor? I don't know, but he's obviously wounded and needs our help. Come, help me carry him to the bed. He's so heavy, father. I've never seen oh. anyone so big in all my life. Quick, Shimon, bring oh. some bandages and schnapps. Uh. We must try to stop the bleeding uh. and dress his wounds. The, the rabbi, you must take me to the rabbi of this village. The rabbi? Then I'm the one you seek. My name is Ara Le Kalisher, rabbi of caravan. Here are the bandages and the schnapps, father. Thank you, Shimon. I can see that your wounds are painful, but none of them seem to be life-threatening. Yes, the alcohol will stink, but it will clean the wounds. That, that fiendish count, that treacherous, 
devil Nicholas. I shall strangle him with my bare hands. He dared to attack me, to challenge me, the mighty Borisov. You are Borisov? The murderer of the good Duke Alexander? Shimin, go call the captain of the guards and tell him... Wait, wait, please, I beg you. I may be a thief, but I am no murderer. And I certainly would not kill our beloved Duke. I have been framed by Count Nicholas. First he hired me to steal your scrolls. You are the one who stole our scrolls? Yes, I did it for the gold he promised me. But instead of gold, he paid me with the golden crown. And being a fool, I accepted it as payment. Then he sent the castle guard to attack me and my men, claiming that I killed the duke. Now the golden crown is in Nicholas's hands, and all my men are dead. Count Nicholas ordered you to steal our toys? Is that what you are saying? Yes, yes! And he paid you with the golden crown? Yes, it must have been the Count who murdered the Duke. How else would he have had possession of the crown? If the Count had the crown and killed the Duke as you say, it seems strange that he would need to steal our Sifre Teure. But Father, we know why he stole them. He wants the 10,000 gilden he asked for in the ransom note. I know, my son. But if the Count has murdered his brother, he must also have discovered the secret location of the Duke's treasures. A man with such wealth, millions of gilden, would hardly need the 10,000 or Sifre Teure could be ransomed for. What are you saying, Rabbi? I am saying that I suspect the Duke is still alive, being held prisoner by his evil brother. And we, with Hashem's help, must do all we can to save him. Wow, Zadie. It was brilliant of Rav Arla to figure all that out with so little information. He was a very great Talmud Chachum, Akiva. And you know, of course, that learning Torah sharpens the mind like nothing else in the world. Oh, Mr. Friedman, tell us what happens next. I can't wait to hear the end of the story. Yes, 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 of course. Now, the most important thing to realize is that only with the help of Hashem could any plan have a chance to succeed. And Yitzchak the Shamis had gathered all the Jews of caravan into the shul to ask for Hashem's help. So proud, amid the sounds of blaring horns and battle cries so loud, we trust our might. The soldiers cry, In victory will stand with sword and spear. We shall prevail. Our fate is in our hands. But we. The regal ship glides calmly across the sea When from the east a raging storm defies its majesty We trust our skill, the sailors cry To guide the ship to land Through waves and wind we'll stay on course Our fate is in our hands But we the nation of Hashem still on a different sea With faith and trust the compass to guide our destiny As keepers of Our 
a bed the patient lies, his future most unsure. Will sickness overtake his soul, or can there be a cure? We trust our gift, the doctors cry, to heal at our command. We'll diagnose, prescribe, and treat, his fate is in our hands. But we, the nation of Hashem, in times of pain and fear, will cry out for a remedy, a potion made of tears. As keepers of the Torah, we know and understand, our hearts must seek the one above, our fate is in His hands. Our hearts must seek the one above, our fate is in His hands. Our hearts must seek the one above, our fate is in His hands. I feel so much better now that we've dove into the Rabbeinu Shalom with all our hearts, Rabbi Yitzchok. And I think that Be'ezra Hashem, I've come up with a plan that has good chances of success. What is it, Rabbi? Come with me to my house, Yitzchok. We'll discuss it there. And I'd also like to introduce you to a very unusual guest that is staying at my house. So, you still refuse to tell me where your treasures are hidden, Alexander? I would never place my wealth in your hands, Nicholas. I know you would only use it for evil. Ha! With or without your treasures, I shall soon be the wealthiest of men. I shall triple the tax on the people of Odania, and I shall confiscate all the possessions of the Jews and expel them from the land. You gain nothing with your stubbornness. Well, then at least I shall not be the one to help you, Nicholas. I would rather die. Then die you shall, my foolish brother. If by sundown tonight you do not change your mind, I shall end your miserable life with my sword. I could see the fear of death in his eyes this time. I'm sure that by tonight he'll be desperate to save his miserable life. Sire, the rabbi of Caravan seeks an audience with you. In your chambers. Shall I let him in? Yes, yes. Let him in. Uh, but you, guard, stay outside my door. I wish to meet with him privately. Sire, is that wise? Perhaps he will try to harm I'm you. I'm not afraid of an old Jew. Let him in immediately. Ah, the rabbi of caravan. So you've come to pay me the 10,000 gildin? For your beloved scrolls? If I'd known you'd be here so quickly with the money, I'd have asked for 20,000. No, Count Nicholas. I've brought you no money. How dare you? How dare you come before me without the gold? I shall have you hanged for this. I come before you, Count, to offer not a mere 10,000 gilden, but rather a treasure worth millions. Millions? Explain yourself, Rabbi. Everyone knows, my Count, that our Duke had a secret hiding place for his treasures. Now that he's been murdered by that scoundrel Borisov, there is only one other person in the whole world who knows where the secret vault is. And I know that person is not you, Nicholas. How could you possibly know this, Rabbi? Because that other person, dear Count, is me. You? Why would my brother reveal the location of his treasure vault to you, a miserable Jew? Because he knew I could be trusted. Well, I don't trust you. In fact, I'm sure you're lying. Ha! Huh. If you knew where the vault was, you would steal the treasure for yourself and not come to me with this information. I've come to you because without you, I cannot open the vault. For you are the only one who has the key that will open the door that guards the royal treasure. Key? I know of no key. The key to the vault, Count Nicholas, is the golden crown of Voldania. The golden crown? Yes. When you insert the five points of the crown into the special lock built into the mighty steel door and turn it three times to the right, the door opens like a charm. I've seen the Duke do it many times. And let me tell you, Count, that there is enough gold in that vault 
to almost blind a man with its brilliance. You must take me there without delay, Rabbi. The royal treasure is rightfully mine. I will take you there. But first you must agree to three things. One, only you and the captain of the royal guard shall accompany me to the hiding place. Two, you must immediately return the Torah scrolls you stole from us. And three, sign and seal on royal parchment with the royal signet ring that the Jews of Caravan will be allowed to practice their faith as long as you are upon the throne of Aldania. Of course, of course, those are reasonable requests. God, quickly bring me a quill and some royal parchment. Then take that crate over there and deliver it to the synagogue of the Jews. Also tell the captain of the royal guard to meet me in my chambers immediately. I don't get it, Mr. Friedman. Why does the Rav trust the Count? He could promise the Jews anything and change his mind after he gets the treasure. Yehuda's right, Zadie. And if the Count finds a secret treasure, he'll kill the Duke for sure. I don't think you have to worry that Ravaria would make mistakes like that. Let me tell you what happened next and you'll understand everything. Now, the Count and the Captain of the Guard followed Ravaria on horseback through a long trail of twisting, narrow mountain roads till they arrived at the entrance to a cave almost totally hidden from view by a cluster of willow trees. Ah, so this is the cave where the Duke has hidden his treasure vault. Let us enter it immediately. But first, Captain, I want you to tie the rabbi's hands together and hold a knife to his back as we enter. Just in case there are any Jews waiting in ambush to kill me and steal the golden crown. Yes, my Count. Rabbi, hold out your hands so I may bind them. Captain, you know that the Duke, your beloved master, always trusted me. Why must you obey this man who is clearly unworthy of the throne? I am sorry, Rabbi, but now that the Duke is dead, the Count is my master, and I must obey him. What are you two whispering about? Let us enter the cave so I may claim my treasure. Ah, with this torch, we'll be able to see where the door to the vault is. One second, what goes on here? This is but a small cave, and I see no door. Just step behind that large rock. That is where the door is. Behind this rock? <laughs> now I've got you, you double-crossing devil! Orozov, how dare you attack me? Captain, slay this man with your sword before he kills me as he killed my brother! Stand back, Captain! For although I am no murderer, on this man I would have no pity! And I suggest you listen to what the rabbi has to say. You may find it very interesting. Kip, Borisov is telling the truth. He did not murder the duke. Then why was the royal crown found with him in the forest? It is the count who stole the royal crown. He gave it to me as payment for stealing the scrolls of the Jews. This is absurd. I stole no scrolls from any Jews. Look at You see this ransom note? It is on the same paper and with the same handwriting as the document the Count just handed me in his chambers. Lies! Nothing but lies! That ransom note is a forgery! You will need more proof than this to convince me that Borozov did not murder the Duke, Rabbi. Borozov could not have killed the Duke, Captain, because I believe the Duke is still alive, being held prisoner in a dungeon in his very own castle. What are you saying, Rabbi? I've been to the castle dungeons and the Duke is not there. Tell the Captain what you told me, Borozov. Captain, my grandfather many years ago was a loyal servant of the great Duke Frederick, Duke Alexander's, and this, eh, creature's grandfather. And when I was but a child, he told me that there is a secret passageway beneath the royal chambers that leads to a dark prison cell that no one can escape from. Ha! Do you think the captain is going to tear down the castle walls because of a make-believe story you heard as a child? There is no need to tear down any walls, as you well know, Nicholas. For there is a key, a very special key, 
that opens the wall leading to the secret passageway. When you place the golden crown into the five small holes found in the eighth stone from the floor and turn it three times to the right, the wall opens up, revealing the secret passageway. Captain, hurry! Take the crown off his head! We must ride at once to the castle! I am certain the Duke is near death! Yes, Rabbi, I will do as you say. We must go at once. How dare you take the royal crown off my head! How dare you believe this Jew and this thief, when I, a count with royal blood in my veins, say they are lying! If we do not find the Duke as they claim, then they will hang from the gallows. But if they are telling the truth, Count Nicholas, your royal blood will flow through the streets of Caravan. We will ride now. Onward to the castle! Wow, Zadie! Did they find the secret passageway in the secret dungeon? Yeah, Mr. Friedman. And was the Duke still alive when they got there? Yes, yes, of course, boys. You know, it's like we say, Utsu Eitzu Vesufer. Der Shoi make all kinds of plans. But Hashem foils them. Yes, it was a great day of celebration for all the people of Voldania, and especially the Jews. And of course, a very bad day for Nicholas the Russia. Raise your voice in celebration. Dance with joy in jubilation. Once again, Hashem salvation. King just in time to save his nation. Nicholas was counted out. He thought he had so much to gain. But now his plans are down the drain. Today is a day of great rejoicing, for an evil plot was uncovered by a few daring men just in time to save me from a horrible death, and the citizens of old Danya from the rule of an evil monarch. It is now time to announce their reward for their courage and bravery. First, the captain of the royal guard. For your loyalty, I am promoting you to General of the Voldania Army, a position I know you have always wanted. Second, to you, Borisov, now that you have sworn never to return to your thieving ways, I appoint you as my personal bodyguard and new captain of the Royal Guard. And last but not least, for you, dear Rabbi, for your wisdom and courage, I proclaim that the kingdom of Voldania will forever be a place where Jews may practice their faith in safety and peace. 
and as a special gift I give to you the golden crown of Voldania to place upon your Torah. Wow, Mr. Friedman, that was the best story I ever heard. Can you tell us another one? There are so many in the book. Please? Not right now, Yehuda. I'm a little bit tired. But maybe some other day, okay? For sure, Zadie. How about tomorrow? Would that be okay? I don't know. Uh, yes, of course. I'd love to tell you another story tomorrow. By the way, Mr. Friedman, whatever happened to Count Nicholas? <laughs> they is me. I forgot to tell you. He ended up right where he belonged. I can't believe my brother would do this to me. How could he put me in this dark and dingy cell under his chambers? Oh, there's got to be a way out of here. Help! Let me out of here! Oh, I never should have started up with those Jews. Oh, there are mice in this cellar. Get away from me! Oh, I hate those mice! Dr. Mitos, that story was really terrific. Golly, that was amazing. That may be, but that count sure didn't have good Mitos. Uh, no, That's oh, right. Boy.